The first story in today's episode goes back to Tesla news that I talked about in a previous episode, and that's about Tesla's new semi-truck needing the same energy as 4,000 homes to recharge according to new research. I talked about the new semi-truck in a previous episode and how Elon Musk unveiled this several weeks ago where he talked about several of the perks for this truck, like speed, autopilot, safety, and more. And many big companies like Walmart and Pepsi have put in orders for the truck, which will begin production in 2019. But lately, researchers have looked into how much this will actually cost, though, for the semi-truck to get its power. One group called Aurora Energy Research found to fill one truck battery in 30 minutes would be around 1,600 kilowatts, enough to power up to 4,000 average homes. Now, when this article came out, it was met with a lot of backlash. One of the top comments on this article being, Energy is energy. Whether energy is stored in diesel and combusted, or energy is stored in a battery than used by an electric motor, you still need the same energy to move the same load. So let's ask this question. How many homes could be powered by the full tank's worth of diesel fuel if it was put into a generator to provide electricity to homes? Or another being, Elon said all the mega chargers would be solar slash clean energy powered. So basically all the energy the truck would need would be created by clean energy and hence not harmful to the environment so much. Many people were saying the title is misleading, you could make that comparison for basically anything that involves a lot of power. Then some people were saying even that that's true, the number will go down as time goes on. But there were people who were saying that this showed how electric vehicles may not be as green as people think. And many people also pointed out how much pollution is caused from creating these various technologies such as solar panels. Even though they're used to create clean energy, the process of making them is not completely clean. But feel free to comment your thoughts on the matter though. The next story is about plans for a mile-wide floating island being worked on by Dutch engineers. The engineers are using floating triangles of different sizes to create this quote island. In some places in European cities, they're losing space on land and are looking for floating solutions, like a floating park to add those various features to the city. It would also provide space for people to work and even live on, but it could also be used to save us from rising sea levels and for sinking cities like Miami or Amsterdam, where more of it's being covered by water. The applications of this include producing energy, making new homes, and loading shipping cargo, and is overall a possible way to utilize our seas and oceans for various purposes. And these islands will be anchored to the seabed and fastened to the shore. Problems they're still working out include how to withstand various weather conditions plus tidal movements. This is in the very early stages right now, but they believe this could be feasible within 10 to 20 years, so it's a ways away if it does become a thing. The next story is about engineers programming tiny robots known as RoboBees to move and think like insects. Autonomous flying micro-robots have potential applications in search and rescue missions, surveillance, and climate monitoring, and even crop pollination. There's been previous success in building tiny robots, but programming them to behave autonomously is another story. If one of these robots is hit with a tiny gust of wind, it will lose control, so it would need to be programmed and built to avoid crashing, recover, and continue flying in this event. And they are using various algorithms and sensors to do just that. Currently, if they want these robots to be able to detect a small gust of wind, adjust its course, and land on a small flower, it would require a desktop-sized computer on it, due to all the processing power it would need, which of course is not feasible. Sylvia Ferrari, a professor of mechanical and aerospace engineering, believes using neuromorphic computer chips will greatly reduce this issue of how much the robot needs to carry. Neuromorphic chips process electric current that is similar to how neurons fire inside the brain. One doctoral student has also created a virtual simulator of the robotic vehicle and the aerodynamic forces it experiences, thus providing a way to accurately predict motion during flight even in unstable environments. This project is extremely challenging for these various reasons, but researchers believe there's a lot of potential once these get going. And that's where I'm actually going to end this video as I needed to keep this one shorter to get it out on time, but if you liked it, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.